catching fire. This is powerful stuff. When Jonathan Jacobs and I practiced this and energy levels shot skyward, we were so much in energy surging through us that it was very electrical outlets and every home's burst into flames. This is the truth. When I lived in the dump, I could barely afford to pay rent or electrical systems that that were fried. It cost the landlord over $7,000 to repair it. Then, Jonathan and I experimented with energy. The fuser box in his garage caught on fire, although it wasn't why they call me Mr. Fire. It does demonstrate that what we were making was changes internally. You'll see changes internally. Jonathan had a new fuse box put in. My landlord replaced the entire electrical system in the house. But as my energy increased, I also had to move into a bigger home with better wiring. Again, what you embrace in your inner world creates what you experience in your outer reality. Your inner becomes outer. Jonathan and I were having lunch on a favorite Chinese restaurant one day. Then I noticed that he was hardly anyone in the place. The owner looked worried. He was huddled around in the cash register and talking. Usually he came over to us and smiled, talked, and treated us with, with royalty. And it was clear something was wrong. I mentioned this to Jonathan saying, they seem concerned about money. Jonathan replied, that's why they're concerned. At first, my mind screeched to a halt, but then I started laughing. Jonathan asked me what was so funny. I explained as best I could. Were you a Zen master in a past life or something? I began. What you just said was one of the most answerable mind stretchers that Zen masters come up with. Is What do you mean? I said, those people look worried about money. And you said, that's why they're worried about money. To the outside world, that makes no sense. But it's the truth, Jonathan explained. The concern for money was something already that they had manifested. Now they notice to the outer world the manifestation in their belief. Now they notice it in the outer world. They manifested their belief. Hey, then went on to tell me about the man who had worked with No Rand, an Indian restaurant who was failing at it. Business was lousy. He didn't session with Jonathan and realized he didn't want to run the restaurant at all. Once he was clear about this, he let go of the restaurant and sold it. As a result, people started going to it under the new owner. Once you take care of the inner... It will show results in the outer. Again, take care of the inner. It will show results in the outer. And cut through pain. Another time he told me, When you get the lessons, you don't need the experiences. As bizarre as all the dialogue might seem to you, it's been the truth in my experience as well. That one time a company hired me to help promote one of their Dallas seminars and I advised them on what to do. And then they got angry when I saw that they did the opposite. They were, in essence, screwing up with their own success. And I talked to Jonathan about it, and he asked me what I got out of this. In other words, what was the benefit to me? Assuming part of me did create a company doing everything wrong, how would it serve me? I thought about it, and I had the answer. Their screwed up takes the pressure to succeed off of me, I said. They hired me to help them make a bigger seminar and success, and I wasn't sure I could. But by them not listening to me, they have almost guaranteed that the seminar will failure. When it does, I can't point my finger at them and say, you did not. You did it, not me. He keeps coming back to me when, when we are doing the feeling inside, plays a giant hand in hand, what we end up in experiencing. No matter what the situations you are in, some part of you helped create it. Now, get in touch with it. Release the old beliefs and the energy, and you can move forward creating of what serves you better and brings you more joy. One of the best things you can do is just focus on what you want and how you feel that of how, about having it. Now do it and have it. In this way, you can begin to attract it into you. Write your future. One powerful technique to help you in this area is called scripting. Scripting is when you write your future. Scripting is when you write your future. First heard of the method from my longtime friend Jerry S. The Kicks. The concept is deceptively simple. Just imagine that you already have what you want and write the scene down that describes it. Describe such details that you can feel it. Pretend the movie director writing the scripts from what you want to experience. Really get into it and write it, feel it, sense it, experience it. I have a notebook full of scripts. Everyone is written, has come to reality. Again, when you think about it, feel it, it comes to be. Why not take a few minutes and write your own script right now, right here? Get some paper if you don't want to write in this book, but now you can at a good time to create your future. Neville's advice may help you here. This is from his book, Immortal Man, and it comes from both men and women, and it works for both men and women. First, have a dream. And by a dream, I mean a daydream, a glorious, wonderful daydream. Then ask yourself, what would it be like if it were true? And now how am I as a man? Am I dreaming? I would like to be. What would it be like? Then catch the mood of the wish fulfilled and drench yourself with that feeling. Now, choose what you want to experience and whatever it is, write up a deception, a description of it. As if it was already happened. Instead of writing, I want a customer to call me with a big order. Write, a brand new customer just called and ordered 5000 from me. I feel fantastic. The call came a few minutes ago and I'm still smiling about it. As the customer was delightful and worth with, delightful to work with, they even gave my credit card. I'm running. They even gave me their credit card and I'm running it right now. You get the idea. Pretend the day is done. And you're recording the experience of what you want to have, have happened with your journal after it happened. Be detailed. Be joyous. Enjoy the process. Describe it in a way that you want it just after the fact. And do it right now. Why not? 
If you didn't write a script right now, why not? You create the next moment out of this moment. The next moment's going to unfold from this moment. What you do right now is the energy that sends out and attracts what you get later. That's the attractor factor. Remember, when you write a script, being sure to do it with emotion to create a powerful thought form, a ball of energy that goes out into the world and makes a script come true. This is important to pass over. We are all connected in energy levels. In 1943, Lucia Humphrey wrote in a rare little book on the beam, while we think of ourselves as individuals, we are not cut off from the whole. We are separate beings, but not separate beings. We are separate beings, but not separated beings. Because we are all connected on this behind-the-scenes energy level, we can put requests into the universe at large, and if we're not too attached to the outcome, we are open to receiving the outcome we request, we will receive it in something better or something better. The people involved in manifesting your request will feel your energy on an energy level. We are all connected. Remember, they will be nudged by their own spirit within to help you achieve your goals. This is the spiritual formula for success that never fails, guaranteed. This is the attractor factor. Go back and write your script. You're printing your energy. It's worth mentioning right now that your business cards... Letterheads, flyers, sales, letters, and ads, everything that you produce and hire to someone is produced to market your business. All carry your energy in them. As a result, they will attract or repel the clients you say you want. Think back to some flyer or letter that you've received in your mail, and you've glanced at it in one way or another. You had a feeling about the service in which you had an instant feeling that said, this looks interesting. Or you told yourself, trash this. I'm not talking about the look of the marketing piece, although it's a part of it. When you or anyone hire or creates a marketing document, put by their thoughts and feelings into what they create. People don't have to be psychic to pick up the vibe. If you unconsciously don't believe in your product or service, they believe will appear in your marketing materials, and people will sense it. And if you don't, and you won't get business. Again, feeling attracts miracles. So when you know what you want, you're clear about having it. You can feel the energy from what you want, and it will begin to attract or pull you into that. And you will clearly feel the energy. You will create marketing pieces that convey it. Here's an example of what I mean. When I wrote a sales letter for a software product that I totally believed in, I got staggering results. People read my letters and sensed the sincerity of my product's benefits as a result over 6% of the sent in checks in the world direct mail marketing. That is excellent. But when I wrote a sales letter to offer a service that did not, I did not believe in, I got nearly no replies. Why the same writer creates both letters, but my lack of belief in the second item conveyed to the people. They picked up on my vibe and just knew that I had not better not order, that they had better not order. Another example is the flyer I received to attend workshops in Seattle. Then I saw a dark photocopy of an original flyer, so I wasn't dazzled to bright flyers, fancy types, and cleaver type incredible graphics. But something about the flyer said, sign up for this event. And I did. And when I spoke to others at the seminar, all they said is the same feeling, man, man, many added. I don't even know what it was or why I was even here, but the flyer I knew I was supposed to be here. The people who put on the seminar were clearly about the way and what they wanted, and the confidence appeared in their brochures, and the people came. Contrast with the company I worked with at the time who wanted to put a seminar on internet marketing, the company was after only profits. There was no caring with their business, no sincere desire to serve people. Their attitude showed up in their brochures, and when they put on their event, they expected over 200 people to attend, and only 20 people showed up. You can't fool the attractor factor. Advertising works. I've noticed many people have a negative attitude towards the advertising, and I think it's a limited view. As an ad can help you market your business, it can also become another voice working on your behalf, and it can be a spiritual too. One day I was having dinner and Jerry Esther Hicks and a friend, we were talking about marketing and general advertising in particular. My friend said, you don't have to advertise. You don't have to, I said, but you might want to. A good, can also, a good ad can also increase your business. The last time we ran an ad in a magazine, Jerry began, we got so many replies we couldn't handle them all and I dropped the ad until we were hired more staff. It doesn't matter what we put in the ad, Esther said. People will sense who you are and what you are offering and make the decision from that feeling. Jerry and Esther have hired me to write their ads because they know I believe in their work. And if I didn't believe in their work, their ads I created for them would show it. And I didn't believe, and if I didn't believe in their work, the person they hired to create their ads could reveal that attitude. My friend Sandra Zimmer, who runs the Self-Expression Center in Houston, also knows the power of spiritually based advertising. Sandra consciously infuses her ads with her energy. She actually sits and meditates over her ads, sending her energy into the ad. As a result, her ads have magnetic quality to them. She once told me that people hold on to her ads as long as the seven years, and I know that I've seen Sandra's ads for many years before finally met her in person. Although her ads look different, they felt different. There's just something about her ads that made them memorable, that something was Sandra's own energy. Advertising is important, Sandra once told me, but it's the energy that you put into the ad that does the work. It's really the law of attraction of work. Again, who you are inside creates from which everything you get on the outside. Who you are on the inside 
creates the results that you get on the outside and your inner attracts your outer. Even the marketing piece carries in your energy. Get clear feelings that you want or want to do, be, or have, and you will naturally go into the direction of attracting what you want. Jonathan's method. Since I work with Jonathan Jacobs for more than 10 years, seeing him almost like weekly, I have a good idea of the method for creating results. And as you know by now, I'm here able to help me. I am now by now. He was able to help me and others achieve miracles. I think this three-step method to worth a closer look. Here's a typical session with Jonathan. Number one, we meet and he asks me what I want. This is the setting the intention stage. Once you decide of your outcome, you rest almost falls into place. So Jonathan would always begin focusing on your desire. What do you want? Number two, then we focus on the way of achieving my desire, obviously of the getting clear stage of the process. Jonathan uses his verbal skills to help me recognize what was blocking me from my success. What's in the way of my success? We then channel energy and the intentions of other words since we have a target now and we've identified and cleared everything blocking the pathway to manifesting it. We now basically send energy to the goal through us. How can you receive energy to help you achieve success? As you could probably see, Jonathan used feelings in his last step to help magnetize the desire. Now that you use the attractor factor, in other words, he helped me bring the energy through my body with the idea that it would help manifest my intentions. I'll try to explain this by using my Qi Kong education. Ancient Chinese Secrets Qi Kong or Qi Gong is the ancient Chinese healing art. It resembles Tai Chi that is used in slow movements, body awareness, and the intentional channeling of internal energy that produces results. Qi Kung is used to heal, rebuild, improve an energy and circulation and achieve and maintain body, health, body and mind. You can use a simple Qi Kung type of exercise to pull energy into your body aiming it to attracting your goal. It looks like this. Number one, decide on what you want. Number two, get clear of anything in the way of having the goal. And number three, bring energy into your body while holding your intention in mind. This is easier than it first appears, but all you have to do is breathe. All you have to do is breathe in, imagine the air is energy, see it travel through your body and to achieve for you for an achievement of your desires. Much of the Qi Kung replies on you using your mind while you breathe and move your body. That's what I'm asking is for you to do here and in your mind and see your goal. Maybe you see already accomplished, maybe you can see the goal, but you don't know some level from which it looks to when you want to complete it. So go there, use your mind to experience your intentions. As you breathe and imagine the air is energy going through your mental experience to see the energy fueling, making it live. Just pretend your energy is magic that will breathe life into your intentions. Now let go. You don't need to do much more and as you'll see in the next section of your final step in the attractor factor formula, letting go is very important. Your burning desire. When I was in Australia in May 1999, I learned that many needs and seeds don't open up and grow unless you first, unless they are first burned. In the human body, you open up your seeds and desires with the heart and heat of emotion. Whenever you feel love or fear, the very too strong emotions, you are turning up the heat. The heat reaches your deeper mind and opens your seeds and images from which you want. How you do with that though, now how you do that is through feeling. The point of this step is that you must joyfully feel energy of the thing that you want to do, be, or have. As Joseph Murphy wrote in his little book, How to Attract Money, the feeling of wealth produces wealth. The feeling of wealth produces wealth. Or as William E. Town wrote in 1920, A thought is powerfully only when it is backed by feeling. Feeling gives it through its reactiveness to merely make an affirmation of what you desire. Without faith or feeling will accomplish little. The Judge Thomas Troward wrote in his book, The Hidden Power, our thoughts, our thought as feeling is the magnet which draws to us those conditions which accurately we correspond to itself. Our thought as feeling is the magnet which draws to us those conditions which accurately we correspond to itself. Feel the joy of having what you want. Feel it right now and you will begin to attract it to you and you to it. The whole process of mental, spiritual and material riches may be summed up to one word. Gratitude. The whole process of mental, spiritual, material riches may be summed up into one word. Gratitude. Joseph Murphy, Your Infinite Power to Be Rich in 1966. Step 5. The Ultimate Secret. Here's a secret that may surprise you. When you want something but can live without having it, you have upped the odds of your having it. This is one of the ironies of life. As long as you are playing fully, playfully desiring something, but not addicted to you having it, then the universe will most likely quickly bring it to you. But as soon as you say, I must have this, you begin to push it away. Why? Because you are sending out an energy to repel what you say you want. Because you are focusing on a need and not, the, not in the moment. Because you haven't learned the ultimate secret. Step five is let go. The ego's love. Years ago, I discovered that most of us, myself included, don't like to let go and allow because there's something to let 
for us as far as grasping and grapple with it. There's no drama. Most of us feel that if we can't get it, there's a fight and a struggle. And if we don't feel like we're accomplishing anything or getting anywhere, the struggle gives a sense of accomplishment. At least you could say, hey, I tried. The ego gets a big rush out of the struggle. The ego gets a feel that it is doing something worthwhile. Well, that's okay if the ego needs to pat itself on the back or let it struggle for some of the things in which you desire. But the truth is that you don't have to struggle at all.